All right, guys. One point six liter GDI, and yes, I run it without an engine cover. If you like just holding heat in your engine bay, leave it on. But it's all it's for is cosmetic. Anyways, removed my intake. I got a little makeshift splitter box. No, it's not cold air. It's still hot air, but helps a little bit. Um, in the process of taking the throttle body off, I'm going to be doing the throttle body upgrade. This applies to all 1.6 liter Gamma GDI 1.6 engines that Hyundai produces, Hyundai and Kia both. The throttle bodies are very small on these one point. Wow, I almost just died. Okay, well we're gonna hang this uh, lower, I guess. Well, that defeats the purpose now. It's funny. I pulled on that to make sure that it uh, wouldn't fall on me. Still did. So, anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. The throttle bodies are very tiny on these engines, okay? Everyone loves to argue with me, but the heads are capable of a lot more airflow, but due to fuel economy, they decided to create a variable intake runner and I'll show you that in a minute. Throttle body though is probably the biggest restriction in the intake system. So what I'm going to be doing, and this is not going to help fuel economy in the slightest, it's probably going to make it worse, but I'm not after fuel economy. I want a little bit more pep in that step. So we're going to be putting the 1.8 liter slash 2 liter, they're the same throttle body, they're slightly bigger than this, no I don't know exactly how many millimeters bigger, if I remember right I think they're 4 millimeters bigger, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about a throttle body, it does make a difference. Um, we're going to be putting the 1.8 slash 2.0 liter throttle bodies, uh, they bolt right up to this housing. The only difference being the bore is slightly bigger, okay? So we're going to be putting that on. The other thing, I'm pulling the intake manifold off, okay? We're at 100, almost 175K here. Now, yes, I've done the GDI spray cleaners, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, okay? It's still going to carbon up. Yeah, you can run a catch can. Guess what? Still going to carbon up. So, here we are on a Saturday. I just happen to have some time, which is kind of rare. So, book time on the manifold is about a two-hour job. So, I'm going to take the probably three hours it takes to pull the manifold, scrub all the intake valves, uh, put it back together, then I'm going to put the throttle body upgrade on. I'm going to reset the fuel adaptations in the PCM. And then I'm going to go rape date it and see if I can notice any difference, which probably won't be a lot of difference. Um, I got an exhaust system coming. We're going to be bolting on here soon as well. Uh, once I get all that done, I might have to actually change the intake for the throttle body. I'm going to see if that will stretch around the bigger one. It may, it may not. But once I'm done with that BS, I am going to buy some credits through HP for the software on this. I, I haven't even thought about doing it. It just has never really been worth it. But I'm going to buy some credits on HP. I'm going to go in, change some of the parameters. I'm going to change the target air fuel. And I'm going to see if I can, you know, bump up a little torque on this. It's not going to be anything crazy. We're maybe talking like maximum of, of 20 foot pounds and that would be like on a really good day so but these cars are slow and uh, not super fun to drive they are very nimble which makes them a little fun to drive but long story short we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, I just wanted to film the intro or intrum of it so four bolts on the throttle body I'm gonna leave everything connected I'm just gonna pull it off to the side actually 
and I'm going to focus on the intake manifold. Uh, I will be showing you guys what the intake manifold looks like, what the intake valves look like, excuse me. It's going to be bad. Um, yeah, just wait and see. All right. All right, you guys might do it a little bit differently, but I like having room and I'm not fighting anything. So this here, okay, these are Hyundais, guys. They're super easy. So take all the coil plugs off. High pressure fuel pump plug comes out. Vacuum uh, gate or variable intake runner solenoid. Take that plug off. Take this off. Take the main harness and tuck the main harness down here. And then you got AC compressor, alternator, and then right here you have a VVT solenoid. You unplug all that and you literally just take the harness. Don't get aggressive or start bending it or, you know, doing anything crazy like that. Just take it and bend it over, you know, 180. All right, now we have a ton of room here, okay? Now, like little stuff like this, this bracket is going to come off. So I guess I could have left that on, but whatever. Um, and then literally it's a few bolts. Now there are stuff on the bottom you're going to have to watch out for. So there's a couple different plugs that you're going to have to take off that are on a completely different harness. But I will uh, show you when I get those unplugged what they are. But then essentially you're going to take the bolts off, the intake manifold. We're going to pull it, try not to let debris fall in. I blew this off first. I'm also going to make sure it's wiped down before the final tug. And then we're going to put each cylinder on TDC, top dead center. So we're going to have to pull the plugs out. The way I do it, classic way, you stick an extension in there. Rotate the engine until the extension's at the very, very top. Intake valves at that point are going to be shut. Clean cylinder one, tape the other three off. Switch to two, switch to three, switch to four. It shouldn't take super long, but I know there's going to be a lot of carbon in there. So I'll show you guys when we take it apart here. All right, intake manifold is off. You got a hose. This is upside down, keep in mind. Hose right here, it's got to come off. That's actually behind the throttle body. You're going to have to take a harness, like pull it out of this connector. There's another harness that connects to a little, you know, push lock tab on the bottom of the manifold. And then a bracket that holds a ground strap. Some of the shit I'm not even going to be putting back on the damn car because it's just economical Hyundai BS is what it is. Anyways, um, here's the intake manifold. Set it right there for right now. Alright, so now we have access to our intake valves. So, I'm going to figure out a good way to light this area in there and um, figure out a good way to light this area so I can send the camera down there and show you. But uh, I can already see <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty bad. So uh, I got to pull the plugs out. First cylinder is going to go to TDC. We're going to tape off the rest. We're going to start cleaning. All right, guys, things you're going to need for the job. Duct tape. Absolutely use duct tape. A really, really long quarter inch extension. You're going to need a 22 mil for the crankshaft pulley bolt. Everything else on these damn Hyundais is uh, 8, 10, and 12 with occasional 14. So not a lot of tools to, to disassemble. But here's what we got going on. We're going to take this uh, wrench and we rotate the engine clockwise until we see this this extension come up and then as you're pulling there's going to be about five degrees where you see this the top of the extension it's going to come up and then all of a sudden it's not going to move at all as you're turning it what you want to do is find the point right in between where it goes down when you're when you're pulling the wrench so to simplify that as you pull the wrench 
it's going to either come up or it's going to come down depending on which stroke it's on, okay? Now as you're rotating and you see it come up, it's going to come to a point where all of a sudden you see the wrench stall even though you're turning it, or the extension, excuse me, you're going to see it stall out at the height it's at now, and then you're going to keep turning and nothing's happening and then all of a sudden you'll see it start to float back down. You need to find the sweet spot right in between where it's coming up and where it's coming down, which is going to be TDC, okay? Now, you have to do this per cylinder, okay? So, the fact that this cylinder right here is at TDC, it's at the very top, these intake valves are closed, okay? That means the intake valves are seated up into the head, which means we can scrub clean, it's not going to fall into the cylinder. However, the other cylinders, the intake valves are open. Well, two of them, excuse me. One partially, maybe. I, I can't remember exactly how these do the, the order, but you get my point. We need to tape from here over, tape that off completely, as well as the top where the spark plugs are. You don't want debris falling in the engine. That's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do here. Now, what I got is a little light beam that I'm going to focus here and set up so that you guys can see. Alright guys, I'm going to bring you into focus here. This is a nice clear shot of how much carbon is stuck to that valve. Look at that. I mean, that is a colossal amount. So, that's the whole goal here, is we're trying to scrub all of that off, okay? Now the other intake port and the rest of them all the way down the line are just as bad, if not worse, okay? This one, for example, horrible. Horrible. So, I know you guys are curious, this engine, 175,000 miles, okay? And it's not about the fact that, you know, you drive the car slow and everything carbons up. I've beat the snot out of this car, okay? Now, I will say, disclaimer, the whole time there was no catch can, okay? But a catch can is not going to prevent this from happening. That is horrible. Look at that. That valve's open right now and it can't even breathe air. You guys, this is the reality of what we're gonna be dealing with with engines now. Everything's going GDI. Now, manufacturers are starting to realize, oh hey, if there's no fuel spraying on the intake valve, these things carbon up bad. But a lot of them don't care because by the time you have really severe problems, you're going to be out of warranty. So what the hell do they care, you know what I mean? But us as people that want to, you know, own the car long term are going to have to deal with that stuff. So this is a reality of it is uh, like some manufacturers, Toyota, you know, Toyota is one of my favorites. They went hey you guys we actually care about reliability let's do direct and port injection to wash the intake valves and guess what those engines don't have any carbon problems now granted they're still new but literally they've been doing quality control checks pulling heads and stuff after like 60k and there's not a speck of carbon on the valves so that's the good stuff there now I am uh, I would say I'm on the third but that's actually cylinder number two I'm working my way this way. I know it seems strange, but I just preferred to do it that way. Um, I have got a lot of carbon out of there. Um, so, now, I'm not really for guys uh, using, like, pry bars and picks and stuff like that. But here's the deal. As long as you don't push down super hard on the valve so that that stuff can actually fall into the cylinder... Because these little Hyundais have little baby valve springs in them, 
They're not like, you know, a real engine where there's tons of tension on them. So, that being said, my recommendation is to take smaller pick tools, okay, like, like I got this guy right here. Now what I've been doing, and you guys aren't really going to be able to see with the camera angle here, but what I've been doing is going down in here with the pick tool and like scratching at the bigger chunks. And when you do that, it kind of breaks apart um, the rest because the big chunks here and they get really, really, really rock solid. And then all the carbon starts to stick to that big piece and then it starts to coat the entire valve. So you always want to go for the big chunks. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull a big chunk off and show you in just a second. All right, so valves are at the top now. Um, how I've been doing this, again, is what I've actually been doing is taking my big flat blade and prying upward. i got to find it here, though. Oh, it's right here. So I've been taking, and again, guys, you got to be really careful when you're doing this stuff. It, this isn't the way it was supposed to be done. I have a walnut blaster, but the fucking tank cracked and is leaking and won't hold pressure. So we're going to do it this way then, I guess. I'll have to go back to Harbor Freight and uh, complain. Okay, that's just one little piece. I mean, there's chunks in there. Like... Holy cow, I'm gonna try to push that one out. That's such a big chunk. I'm gonna have to blow it out. I can't even I can't even believe how bad. I mean, like I've driven the car really, really hard. I thought that that would make it better. Like, I, I thought the carbon would be less severe, but it's not the case at all. The carbon is... It, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay, you see that? That's not even close. Like, that is maybe 5% of what's actually in there, okay? Okay, this isn't even a quarter, not even close to a quarter of the pile that's in there, okay? I'm trying to give you like a plain reference. I can't twist my arm like that, but... I mean, for these little baby valves, that is a ton. Now, I'm gonna sit you guys right here. See if we can zoom in. Okay, so what I want you guys to look at is, I can't really do this and still be able to show you, but, I mean, just look at that. That's just dipping the pick in there. There's so much in there, it's not even right. And that's even after scraping. So it's just, uh, you know, I'm a, a technician by trade. I've done BMWs and Volkswagens and like the TSFI direct injections and stuff like that. I actually haven't done a, uh, a Hyundai 1.6 not actually pulled the manifold. I will tell you right now, this motor takes the cake for the worst carbon buildup I've ever seen on any engine by 170,000 miles. I mean, I would have I should have done this at like 100 because just at 100 if we were to look at how much of that is in there All right, I got to show you guys the other one too because we're going to move you over just a little bit. I'm going to buy a really high zoom camera for you guys. But I 
I think you can see what I'm talking about though. What I'm going to do is, uh, this is harder than you think, trying to shoot and do this at the same time. Alright, so just watch. Ready? See that? It's hitting me. You guys would have got a kick out of that one, just hit me right in the eye. Well, we're getting better. Well, I'm going to move you guys and uh, we'll come back at a later point. As you can see, I'm to the point where I can see the intake valve itself, which is pretty significant. So I'm going to keep going at this though. Alright guys, so here's the scoop. We got the uh, 2.0, 1.8 throttle body on. It is extremely difficult to get the stock boot over it. I'm probably gonna upgrade to a bigger size uh, boot. I couldn't even use the clamp on it. That's how much more it stretches. Um, as you just saw how much bigger this throttle body is, it does actually bolt up just fine. And uh, the connector plugs right in, which is a huge win. So, and speaking of, I didn't even, I just test fitted it, but I think that would help if I uh, plug that in, huh? All right. So, um, that being said, I had to kind of cut it short and clean all the valves, throw the manifold right back on. I removed a bunch of the BS brackets because it's just Hyundai BS, but we got the oversized throttle body on. We got the intake valves cleaned. Um, next video is going to be the full stainless exhaust. I already have the hat, cat hollowed and I, it's already a straight pipe all the way out but right now it's just it's, it's too loud. But uh, I'm going to do some test pulls with this and after resetting the fuel adaptations and see if I got any more power. I may, I may not. You know it's not going to be dramatic. Again it's a Hyundai. But uh, the only problem you're going to run into with the 2.0 throttle body is your evap purge solenoid there is no port on the top for a vacuum reference because they're i think their manifolds are slightly different but what that means is that you're going to need a throttle body spacer that has that vacuum reference or you're going to have to tap into an existing vacuum port to get that reference now you could tap in here whether or not it'll affect the variable runners it might lag it out a little bit. I'm going to play around with that later on and see if there's, you know, maybe it even does a performance benefit. It'll hold the door shut longer. Um, I don't know, but we'll figure all that out another time. Right now I'm just about to throw the filter back in and uh, start it up. And hopefully she runs nice and smooth and I don't have any codes for lack of evap. Although that probably will trip pretty soon at least on the next couple drive cycles. But the 2.0 throttle body install is super easy, okay guys? I got this throttle body off Amazon and no, it's not a high quality one, but I literally got it for, I think it was like 89 or $93 and it was like a legit, uh, well, I'll show you. Focus, there we go. All right, so there's the part number. Now, I don't know if this is actually Hyundai, you know, whatever, but it should work. So, that being said, um, 
We're gonna go ahead and start it up. We're gonna do some throttles on it while you guys are listening to it. We'll see if the intake sounds any different. It may, it may not. And then uh, that's a wrap, so there we go. All right, guys, everything's all put back together. Again, you know, haven't thrown a code yet for the EVAP, but that's bound to happen. Uh, she does idle fine, though. So if you guys are worried about just bolting on the 2 0 throttle body, um, it, it is idling fine. It's not like hunting and there's nothing weird going on. But I will tell you what, it does definitely increase the airflow through the head because. This thing's having compensation issues right now. I just revved it up a few times and it sounded like I had two-step. And I would really love to film it for you guys, but there's a neighborhood like right behind us and it's damn near 9.30 at night. So I'm gonna be nice and uh, we're gonna pass on that one for now. But there will be more coming on that. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys that update. Two old bolts right on. You do miss a vacuum reference. You have to tap in somewhere else or get a throttle body spacer for it. But other than that, uh, she's ready to rock and roll, boys and girls. All right, guys. One more thing I forgot to mention. I'm not. I don't have light right now, but the throttle body coolant line ports, the actual outlets, will not fit your stock Veloster, they will not. So as a result, do what I did, bypass the cooling on the throttle body. I took one of the hoses, because there's two hoses that come out that carry coolant, one of the hoses, I took the other hose off and I just hooked it right back into the system so it's just a pass through now. So did the cooling delete on the throttle body. Yes, before next summer I will absolutely reduce the line size, turn it back into liquid cooled if I still have the car, but it's fall, or we're at least coming into fall. It's not very warm here in Minnesota. Not too worried about it.